So my name is Remy Graves. I work in the education team here. And we're about to show a teen tour, which is basically a project where we get young people to share their perspective on an exhibition. So Manon and I have been working together for the last five weeks. We've been coming into the space, looking at Helen Levitt's work, and thinking about what different insights and perspectives Manon can share with you. And the purpose of teen tours is a two-way thing. It's to get a young person to try something new, to present their ideas, and also something new for you to have perspective of someone who's got their own kind of view on the work and to give you a different insight into what's on display. So I'm going to stop talking and now hand over to Manon, who's going to share her insights with you. Um, hello, everyone. So my name is Manon. I'm currently an A-level student and I study psychology, French and photography. But photography particularly is a subject I really, really enjoy studying, but also outside of school as a hobby, um, simply because I really love the feeling of taking pictures. It's something really personal to you. And if it's something you find interesting, then it's definitely worth photographing. It doesn't have to be perfect or absolutely logical. Um, in fact, um, Henri Cartier-Bresson, French pioneer of street photography and um, someone who Helen Levitt really um, was inspired by said that it is an illusion that photos are taken with the camera. Um, they are taken with the eye, the heart and the head. And I think these words are really important to keep in mind today when we look at Levitt's pictures and learn more about her style of photography. Um, and so as for why I decided to tour Levitt's uh, pictures today is because I instantly felt more connected to her work since I've recently begun um, trying out film photography myself and developing my own um, pictures in the dark room. And so um, as soon as I walked in and looked at her pictures, I was just instantly just really interested in how she did it, why she did it, and just who she was as a person. Because um, I actually didn't know um, who she was until then. And in fact, has anyone heard of her before uh, coming here? Really, really few people. Okay, well, that's okay because I'm literally going to be talking about her all this um, tour. So um, that's great. Um, and so just a quick introduction about her. She was an American street photographer and she was active for around 70 years, which is a huge period of time. Um, and she mainly took pictures of working class people um, in the streets of New York where she lived. And so how about we begin with the first picture I will be talking about today. Um, please don't be shy and come closer to get um, a better look of what I will be talking about because they're quite small pictures. So please, if you need a better look, don't hesitate to really come close. So this picture is untitled, which is something that um, all of her pictures share. And I think that's a really interesting detail because that allows us, the viewers, to um, have further freedom to think and interpret what we want about her pictures. So in here, we can see four little girls walking in a really empty street and um, their backs are facing us and all of their heads are looking here towards the left at these soap bubbles. And here, I just really love the contrast that there is between the dark, harsh brick wall and the smoothness and the roundness of the bubbles. It really seems almost fairy tale like and also the contrast in what maybe what they symbolize soap bubbles you usually associate them with you know cleanliness and um, maybe something quite childish um, and so it's just really interesting and also kind of a slap to reality once your gaze is off the bubbles and off these young girls looking at them um, because of like the dirty street and it kind of just slaps you back to their situation and where they are, which seems quite empty. There's no car, there's no other people. Um, 
And also the angle is really interesting, the way the road is in a diagonal towards the right, um, and yet they're all looking towards the left, um, as if it's a sort of metaphor um, of them being on this path of growing up in like um, a really tough time, since Levitt took pictures mainly during the 30s and 40s, and during those times, um, New York was really struggling financially due to the Great Depression and all those um, struggles. And so when we see these pictures and we have these things in mind, it gives us a bit like of this sense of hope and enjoyment to see these girls so absorbed in those tiny soap bubbles, um, just really reminding us that children are easily fascinated by what they see. And another reason why I love this picture so much is because of its kind of relationship with this one here. Um, in it, we can see a woman smoking a cigarette in the foreground. Um, she's looking directly at the camera and she seems to have a bit of a annoyed or uncomfortable, unhappy expression. Um, and she's really acknowledging our presence, um, which makes, um, to me, feel very powerful, like we are involved in this scene. Um, as I said, I can't exactly read her facial expressions, and I feel like that's one of the many beauties of Levitt's pictures, is that there is a lot of people in her pictures, and um, you're never really sure what they're feeling, what they're expressing. And once again, it's like them being untitled. You just really have the complete freedom to interpret what they could be feeling in that moment. And so, yeah, her piercing gaze uh, being in this picture is a big difference compared to this picture where their backs are facing us and we're looking at it a bit more like a spectator. Well, in this one, we're really being acknowledged and maybe um, we're supposed to be like involved in this scene. And um, in this one, the street is also in a diagonal, but going towards the left here. And I feel like when you take a bit of a step back and just look at both, um, you can see that they could be in some way connected um, in how um, they're both diagonally going this way and as if they're eventually going to cross each other, which could be in a way to suggest that Levitt's pictures are all connected um, and also maybe how these girls are on this path of growing up, as I said before, um, and so maybe could be sharing similarities of the path of adulthood as this woman here. Um, and so, yeah. And the next picture I will be talking about is this one here. Don't worry, I will be going a bit more around uh, the exhibition. It's just that I really like these two pictures relationship and these two pictures relationship. So um, to begin, first thing, um, is there anything that strikes you in this image when you first look at it? Does yeah, it is. Um, do you want to go a bit closer? <laughs> yes, so um, it's really difficult to see, but if you get really close, you can see that there's a hand right here that's pointing towards the right. And, oh, sorry, the left. And um, yeah, and so it's coming out of like really tightly shut curtains. And I think I, I just really love this detail because although you cannot see the person, just their hand, the way they're closing the curtains really tightly is maybe because they didn't want their pictures taken. And so it still gives them a lot of personality and a lot of um, dynamic to this picture. Although at first glance, it seems a bit um, grim and difficult to connect to. And so, the way the hand is pointing as well, it seems very commanding, um, especially if you look very, very closely. Um, the hand seems a bit blurry, as if like it was moving when they were pointing. So you can tell they were very hurried and insistent for uh, Levitt to maybe move on and take uh, something else and not him. 
And so, yeah, that's like an aspect I really love about um, Levitt's pictures is how she includes humor in it, um, whether it's explicitly or in a subtle manner, like in this one here. Um, it creates a lot of dynamic and reminds us that even if the people that she photographs are in tough situations and just um, often having a hard time, you can, you can tell that um, they still lived lives just like us and humor was part of their daily lives as well. So, as I said, I also really like um, this picture due to its relationship with this one. Um, in it, we can see a chalk drawing, maybe done by a child, and it says, button to secret passage, press. And once again, I really appreciate that playfulness. Um, it's really innocent and it reminds me of my own childhood when I would um, take chalk and just write silly little messages or silly little drawings on the floors or like brick walls. And actually, interestingly, uh, Levitt started her journey in photography uh, by taking pictures of chalk drawings uh, made by children. And she and that all started because of her really big interest in children's street culture, which is essentially how children play and interact in the streets. And in fact, the first, the very first picture of the exhibition that's next to the writing um, has a chalk drawing and a little girl standing beside it. And I think that was a really clever choice from the curators as um, that was the first theme, the first um, idea that she was really captivated by and so explored first um, in her work since this is a retrospective exhibition. So re returning on this um, picture, I think it was also a smart choice to put it right after this one since the hand is pointing towards it and um, it has a button and it's really like it has a message telling you to press it. So it's as if it's really um, leading the viewer on to first of all go and um, see this picture and um, press this button to go to the secret passageway, which could be um, a sort of metaphor for Levitt's other works. Um, and the this, these imaginary and surrealist worlds that she creates in each of them. Um, and so now we're finally going to leave this wall and go to this one over there. Um, Sorry, sir. It's all right. Um, so this was taken in the 1940s, so a bit later than some of the pictures we just saw. Um, in it, we can see two young children in the foreground, yet if you pay really attention to it, they're actually blurry, and the people in focus are here at the back, so these young children and this woman right here. And so while you observe it, you can see that um, the young uh, children behind have really neat clothes, really neat hair, um, and same for the woman over there, and it seems like they might be going somewhere. Um, and also the young girl has um, a patterned dress, polka dots, and so is the older woman here. So maybe it's like suggesting this um, connection between them and so maybe a kind of mother figure and she's also seeming to be supervising them which is a detail that we um, actually rarely see in Levitt's pictures um, since usually they really concentrate on children being themselves playing in the streets being um, taking risks in fact and maybe um, being in a bit of too much of a dangerous situation but Something that's interesting is that her upper face is cropped and actually Levitt really enjoyed cropping her pictures and manipulating uh, the truth or like just um, how they look like to make them look different. And so um, that, that could be a way to remind us that the focus are um, the children, but also how maybe this whole idea of her um, supervising these children is probably not her like main attention and she's actually focused on something else. 
Um, and so, yeah, compared to these children, the children at the front have quite unkept hair, um, their clothes look a little bit ragged, and um, in fact, this young boy is not even wearing a shirt, and he seems really um, vulnerable and maybe cold to the way um, he's um, holding himself here. And I feel like it's just a really interesting detail um, to look at, especially since if you look at the um, walls of this building here, the way it separates them and this side is like really um, beautiful, almost like new. Well, on this side, it's really dirty and hasn't been looked after in a while. It really emphasizes this divide between this group of kids and these two kids here. And so um, although um, Levitt's pictures um, didn't have the like specific aim to call out social injustices, um, this picture really portrays how often more financially comfortable people um, who live right next to less uh, financially comfortable people um, kind of turn a blind eye um, to these people or are simply ignorant. And I think the way those children um, have their backs towards these children and the more um, dirty aspect of that building really emphasizes that. And same for the woman having her face cropped. Um, and yeah, but before moving on, um, has anyone noticed something about this picture that they maybe didn't notice when they first looked at it? Literally any detail that maybe you didn't see at first and now you just see it very clearly? Sorry? Oh, yeah, the, the focus design? Oh, right, yeah. Um, actually, um, there's a little detail that I, took me a bit of time to, um, to see, like it, I needed a few looks, is that there's actually a third girl right here, um, but she's literally just right behind this girl, so you can barely see her. All you can see is her shoes and a little bit of her hair, and I think that's really just lovely because, once again, her pictures, you need more than just one look, one more um, more than just one observation, you really need to pay attention. And I think that's just, it really fits with her um, theme of like imaginary worlds and surrealism where sometimes things don't really exactly make sense or seems a bit amiss. And so, yeah, so the next picture I'll be talking about, big surprise also has children in it, but I think it's just as captivating as the last. Um, it's right here. This one right here. Um, so in this picture, we can see two young children by the entrance of a building. And as soon as I saw them, I thought they looked extremely mature for their size. Um, they seem like really, really young children. Yet um, from their clothes, they seem a bit big on them. Maybe they are hand-me-downs from older siblings. Um, and also the way these children look, uh, for example, this young boy right here has uh, such a serious facial expression and an adult's body language, just the way he's leaning on that uh, part of the building here. And it really just looks as if he had a terrible day at work and now he has to go home to his wife and kids and tell them uh, what happened today. And it's almost, kind of shocking to see this, that it becomes humorous. And so once again, bringing in the, the humor aspect in her, in her pictures. And um, I think this aspect is even more emphasized when you see that in his hand, he's um, holding a sort of paper mask of maybe an um, animal. And that's um, a really childish object and something you really expect a child um, to have. And so it's just, really confusing to see that the way he's um, just expressing himself is just not what you expect from a child at all. And, um, but so yeah, this picture was taken in 1942. So once again, the effects of the Great Depression um, were still very, very present. And World War II had just begun as well. So it was a 
really, really harsh time for everyone, but especially children as childhoods um, in those times really didn't last as long as nowadays. And they were faced with really difficult situations every day. Um, their family and their friends just um, really trying hard to just have food on their plates and having clothes to warm them. Um, and so um, really maturing really rapidly. And so going back on those clothes, actually, um, they're quite old looking. Um, the young boy's shoes seem really used. Um, and usually nowadays, when you think about kids' clothes, you really associate them with bright colors and just vibrant um, maybe motifs or designs and um, patterns, such as the dress we just looked at in um, that picture with the polka dots. Um, and so it just feels really adult-like and mature for uh, like children to be wearing this. And I feel like the black and white aspect of these pictures also really help in communicating this um, rather grim adult-like um, image that these kids portray. Um, but Levitt has um, taken color pictures as well and that is exhibited downstairs. So please, if you think that will um, interest you, uh, please go and check it out after this tour. And so the final picture I'll be discussing is over on this side. Please follow me. This one right here. So it's quite small. Please don't hesitate and come closer, get a better look. So this picture I feel shares a um, sort of similar theme than the previous one, um, which is about how children show adult-like behavior. But this time it's more due to admiration of adults rather than like the children's personal situations and struggles. So in this picture, we can see a young boy watching a group of young men just really attentively. His head is completely turned towards them, his attention completely on them. And so, yeah, this group of men is sitting on stairs by the entrance of a building, just like the last one. And um, they seem very confident um, the way they're sitting and they also could be in the way actually of that entrance way but they don't really seem to care and I feel like the young boy could be um, admiring also this part of them just um, being able to sit there without a care and not being scared that maybe someone will come up to them and tell them to just go away um, maybe he's not as self-assured yet and so just seeing um, all the um, people doing it is like just a big thing and an admiration thing. And so I also love the crowdedness feel of this picture. Um, you can tell a lot of things are happening due to their eyes looking in all different directions. Um, for example, the boys looking at the men, three of those young men are looking at something opposite towards the right, while this last uh, young man is looking straight at the camera, acknowledging once again that a picture is being taken. And um, it just makes you curious even more about the scene and what is happening and what they could be looking at that is so absorbing. Um, and in fact, there's also a sliver of a person right here on the edge um, and it's mostly their clothes, maybe a scarf that we can see. Um, and it's just capturing the slight movement of them going, um, walking into the, the, the frame right here. And I think um, maybe Levitt cropped them out or maybe it was uh, on purpose, but either way, I think it's a really clever way to uh, make us understand that this is a rather busy street, um, more things are happening. It's not just these people that are on the street, there's a lot more things happening, it's busy, it's crowdy. And in fact, there was a lack of air conditioning during the 30s and 40s, so people were outside all the time. And um, to which Levy explained that she really loved that activity um, because in the business of the streets, she was more invisible and she could capture more interesting scenes going on. And so I feel like that is just 
such a beautiful um, thing that we can uh, see within that picture is that there is always more to it. Um, so this was the last picture I was um, going to talk about. Uh, but before I leave you to explore further um, Levitt's exhibition and her amazing work, um, I just wanted to express that Levitt wasn't just an amazing photographer, she was also really interested in filmmaking. In fact, she made a 20 minute film that is um, shown here behind that wall called In the Streets. And um, yeah, and made photo books and tried out very, various different medias. And so I hope you enjoy discovering all of her work and maybe learning a bit more about who she was as a person as well in your own time. And so to finish off, I'd just like to leave you with this last observation that I had about her pictures, which is how every person that she photographs each look like a protagonist from a film. Um, and I find that truly astonishing since um, making every person in the shot look important and interesting to the viewer is a very difficult feat to do in street photography and yet she was able to do it in most if not all of her pictures in my opinion for example if you take this picture right here there's quite a few people in the shot and yet the way the lighting is hitting or each of these people just really makes you interested to take your time and observe each of them and there's no one that's going to be sticking out more to you, your gaze will eventually go to each of them and just observe the situation. And so I also like how, in a way, she was reminding us that everyone is a protagonist, everyone is a main character of their lives, um, wherever they are, wherever they go, and in whatever situations they are in. And so, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.